Hi, and welcome to another WatchGeek video. Today, I'll be doing a review of the new Spinnaker Bradner that is to be released on July 20th. If, however, you sign up for the campaign before the release, you will get a special discount from Spinnaker. To do so, you can click on the link in the description. Also in the description, you will find the promo code WATCHGEEK20 that will give you 20% off on any product on Spinnaker's page, including this watch. Spinnaker's way of saying thank you to my viewers. As a thank you to me, whenever you use that code, Spinnaker will give me a commission, which is going to be used, as you might have guessed it already, to purchase even more watches and help the channel grow. So it's a win-win-win situation. Spinnaker gets publicity, you get a discount, and you help the channel, all in one go. So now let's see if you should spend your money on this watch. In case you don't know, this watch represents compressor style of divers watches, called that way because of cases produced by a Swiss company called EPSA from late 1950s to early 1970s, that, as the name suggests, achieved its water resistance by compressing the gasket using water pressure itself which meant its water resistance was dynamic and changed as you dove deeper, unlike a standard diver's watch that is always at 100% of its water resistance. The engineering advantage of the compressor style is that gaskets last longer since they're not constantly deformed. But that's not the reason they're becoming increasingly popular these days. It's the looks. The signature double crown and an inner rotating bezel under a domed crystal just makes these watches look so cool and so original compared to what we're used to with regular divers and their outer bezels. Like I said, EPSA was the producer of these cases that were then used by dozens and dozens of manufacturers, from Hamilton all the way to JLC. And prices of these vintage pieces reflect the range of brands using them as you can find them from a couple of hundred dollars up to thousands. Although these original compressors are cool beyond measure, just like any vintage watch, I would be very reluctant to use them for swimming and diving. For that, you want a modern interpretation where you know everything is new and working properly, so you can jump into the water worry-free. So far, you only had a few options for that, with all of them just copying the looks of the compressors while relying on regular means of achieving water resistance. These were Longines Legends Diver as a more expensive option, and Dan Henry 1970 as a more affordable one. Since I'm a huge fan of this style, and do plan on getting myself a vintage model, I also wanted something modern I can take into the water with me. The Longines was simply too long for my wrist, and the price was a bit steep for something I will be taking to the beach with me, so I decided to get the Dan Henry. Although I was very close to getting one, I pulled out at the last minute because of the way hands were designed, which made them almost invisible in the dark, and because, of, because the crystal was mineral with a thin layer of sapphire over it. That meant you faced possible delamination and cracks, and I would have liked it more if they just went with a mineral instead of lamination. This made me give up on that model, and I kind of forgot compressors for a while. Until one day, I received an email from Spinnaker with the offer of reviewing their new model, the Bradner. Upon seeing the press releases, I realized that it's exactly what I was looking for. A Dan Henry made better. And although I get these offers and always turn them down, this was simply too interesting to pass, so I accepted the offer. I couldn't wait to see the watch in person and see if it will meet my expectations or get me disappointed. Fortunately, I can say the former happened. This watch is breathtaking in person. The dial color is mesmerizing. It ranges from almost black and dark purple to rich blue, all depending on the lighting situation. It's a very, very dynamic dial. Combine that with the beautiful applied logo that looks like it was written with quicksilver and then frozen in place, and you get one stunning dial that plays with the light wonderfully. Then you have the applied indices that have multiple facets and look like they're hovering above the dial because of the way they cast the shadow. The chapter ring is a completely separate layer, or more exactly a metal ring that is placed onto the dial as you can see a glimpse of the blue dial between it and the bezel at right angles. But despite being applied, it lines up perfectly with the dial markers, showing that Spinnaker is yet another brand that has unlocked the biggest secret of our universe. A secret still unknown to Seiko. 
how to avoid misaligned chapter rings. The chapter ring is finely brushed and helps in giving additional depth to the dial. Like that wasn't enough, the inner rotating bezel has raised minute markers and numerals, making this dial one of the most dimensional dials I have seen. Flatness is the exact opposite of what this dial is. And I love it. What I don't love is the fact the numerals on the bezel are all loomed. Something I dislike generally, as I want my watch to only have the main time and possibly the 12 o'clock pip visible in the dark, as everything else is just a distraction. But I can understand the appeal and it does certainly look good during the day, as the bezel numerals pop and their color matches the dial markers. The loom itself is good but nothing special. It has great initial brightness but loses most of it within minutes. However, after that initial loss, it will stay at a readable level for the rest of the night with your eyes adapted to darkness. The hands are properly long, reaching to the edge of the chapter ring, and also finely brushed, which helps them catch the light at all angles. The design of the hands is also original and it's slowly, slowly becoming part of Spinnaker DNA, as this is, I believe, the third model where they implemented this shape. I especially like how the second hand pip is painted orange to match the water resistance rating. Even a rating itself of 150 meters seems appropriate for a vintage inspired watch and is a refreshing change compared to the 500 and 1000 water resistance we usually see on micros today. The date is done in black to match the dial better, but I think a white one would have worked great too as it would simulate the missing hour marker. All this is placed under a sapphire crystal that is flat for the most part and then has domed edges giving you the best of both worlds. The legibility of a flat crystal with the cool looking distortions on the edge of a domed one. Since crystal is the one thing that will keep getting most of the scratches and keep your bezel and dial in pristine condition, I am glad they went with sapphire. The case is massive and it's the only thing that bothers me. It is 42 millimeters in diameter and has a lug to lug of 49, making it sit at the very edge of being too big for me. Again, since the lugs are sloping downwards and there is nothing overhanging my wrist, it officially isn't too big. But I would prefer it to be smaller, which is something I said to Spinnaker right away, asking them to make a 39 to 40 millimeter version that would have a lug to lug of 44 to 46, as that would look perfect on smaller wrists like mine. The thickness is also pretty big at 14 millimeters, and I know that is nothing extreme in a world where watches go to more than 17, but I believe it would look better at 11 to 12. The watch has 95 grams, which isn't too heavy, but it does give a feel of a solid, well-built watch. Despite the size and the weight, I have to admit I find it very comfortable to wear, and it has been on my wrist for the past week, all day, every day. It sits very comfortably and the dual crowns haven't impeded my wrist movement or dug into my wrist in all that time. The crowns are polished with the lower one which is used to set the time and date having the Spinnaker logo etched in it, while the upper used for the bezel is unsigned. It has just the right amount of resistance that will make sure you don't have accidental bezel movement but not too tight to make turning it a hassle. On mine, even the logo on the crown is always aligned when you screw it in. And screwing it in and out has a nice feel to it. There's no gritting or slipping. It's smooth and catches on the threads immediately. The crowns are the only polished part of this watch as the case is all brushed with different surfaces having different angles of brushing. So the sides have this rich vertical one that catches the light as you move the watch around while the tops of the lugs have a bit finer brushing. The bezel and the rest of the case has concentric brushing and all the tolerances seem very good. Overall, the fit and finish on this watch is very good. Since the watch is powered with the Seiko NH35 movement, which is a third party version of the 4R35, pulling the crown all the way out will stop the movement as it features both hacking and hand winding. It beats at 21,600 beats per hour and comes with just a little over 40 hours of power reserve. Mine has been very constant at plus 5 seconds a day, but with these movements I think it's a draw of luck when it comes to accuracy and like I said, with all other entry level Seiko mechanicals, it is meant to be worn all the time, meaning a drop in power reserve does affect the accuracy. 
Spinnaker did give it a little extra detail in the form of a custom rotor, which I like. So is this watch worth considering and buying? If you like the compressor style watches, yes, definitely. Is it better than, Hen than Henry 1970? To me it is. It has better specs, it has an original design, while Dan Henry is a carbon copy of an existing diver. And it will eventually cost less. If this was a $500 watch, I would tell you it's expensive, but buy it if you really really love the look of it and nothing else cuts it for you. At $285, it offers real value in fit and finish as well as the original design, giving you just a little extra over the Dan Henry. But if you use the coupon code I mentioned that gives you 20% off, the price drops to $228. And at that price, this watch really offers great value. Well, this completes this week's review, so thank you for watching. I hope you liked it and found it useful. If you did, please like and subscribe, and until the next video, bye.